back, and joining me now is Democratic Governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Governor Shapiro, welcome to Meet the Press. Good morning. It's great to be with you. It is so great to have you. Well, let's start off. Our latest NBC News poll shows that more voters are concerned that Vice President Harris will continue Joe Biden's approach than Donald Trump will continue his approach from his first term. My colleague Peter Alexander asked the vice president if she would have done anything differently than President Biden. Take a look at that exchange. Going forward, there is no question that I bring my own experiences and my own life experiences. Is there a career. policy that stands out to you in particular, either? Sure, I mean, my approach to what we need to do around Medicare covering home health care, born out of my experience of, of taking care of my mother. Um, my priority on housing, one, because I know what it means, affordable housing and the ability to buy a home. Governor, given how unpopular poll show President Biden is, has Vice President Harris done enough, enough to distance herself from President Biden? You know, Kristen, I think what is clear is this is a race, not between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, but between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And on that, there are clear contrasts. Kamala Harris wants to cut taxes for the middle class and small businesses. Donald Trump's tariffs and his economic policies would raise costs for middle class families. I think Kamala Harris has a strong and competent approach to foreign policy to try and calm tensions overseas. Donald Trump just wants to throw a grenade and everything and create more chaos and um, more, more suffering across the globe. I, I think you have a clear contrast on freedom between those two candidates. Kamala Harris wants to restore Roe. Donald Trump brags about how he's ripped away the freedom from millions of women across this country. So listen, I think you have a clear contrast between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump and voters are going to the polls literally right now all across America, focusing on that choice, not a choice between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. I understand what you're saying, Governor, but polls do show that more Americans feel as though President Biden's policies have hurt them rather than helped them. So can you name one key policy difference between Vice President Harris and President Biden? How would her administration look different? You know, I've been really encouraged by the amount of energy that Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, has put into focusing on how she will cut taxes for small businesses. The focus on child care tax credit expansion, that's something I've done here in Pennsylvania. We've seen that work to ease the burden on families. I, I think a focus on those kinds of things is particularly important. And those are the kinds of things I think Kamala Harris has brought specifically to this race. Th those aren't necessarily differences, though. They're an expansion or uh, a tweak to some extent to what's been done. Can you name one policy difference? Well, listen, I, again, the contrast I am focused on, Kristen, is between her and Donald Trump. And on that, I think it is clearly different. I don't want to go back to Donald Trump when he was in charge of this country. Remember the record. I know there's still some people that have maybe a little brain fog. They don't remember what it was like. Under Donald Trump, you had more chaos, you had less jobs, and you had a whole lot less freedom. I don't think we want to go back to that time of chaos. I want a stable, strong leader, and that's Kamala Harris. Governor, I don't have to tell you this. The polls are basically deadlocked in your state in Pennsylvania, they have been that way for weeks. There are a myriad of different reasons for why that is. But Senator John Fetterman said that one of the factors is the assassination attempt against former President Trump that took place in Pennsylvania. Take a look at what he had to say. Trump has created a special kind of a hold within the corn, and he's remade the, the party, and he has a special kind of place in Pennsylvania, and I think that only deepened uh, after that first assassination at attempt. Do you agree with that assessment, Governor? Well, I think if past his prologue, we're set for another close race here in Pennsylvania. Let me explain. 2016, um, the race was decided by 44,000 votes. Donald Trump won here in Pennsylvania. In 2020, the race was settled by 80,000 votes. Joe Biden won. In both instances, it came down to a point or less. So the fact that you have polls showing that it's, you know, a jump ball, a statistical dead heat, maybe Kamala Harris is up a point or so, that is not a shock. We are, we are used to close elections 
here in Pennsylvania. And you know, I choose not to worry about that. I choose to work right through it. We understand that this election likely will come down to tens of thousands of votes. It's why I am all over Pennsylvania, doing everything I can for the vice president. Why I'm on this blue wall bus tour with Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Governor Tony Evers of Michigan and Wisconsin respectively. We're gonna be in State College today after spending a whole bunch of time in Western Pennsylvania yesterday and before that Michigan and Wisconsin. We understand these races are close. You've gotta compete for every vote. And while we're a big state, we're still a retail state. You got to show up. And, and I'm encouraged by the fact that yeah. the vice president has been here so much and is committed to coming back here many times before Election Day. Governor, let's talk about the Middle East. You just heard me talking about that with Senator Graham. Vice President Harris has struggled to shore up support from young voters, from progressives who want to see an immediate end to the war in Gaza. In the wake of the death of Yahya Sinwar, do you think that if there is a ceasefire deal, that's brokered, that could have an impact. And if there isn't a ceasefire deal that is brokered, could that hurt Harris with those key groups I just mentioned? Well, look, obviously the situation in the Middle East is, is dire and, and obviously it's having an impact on our politics here at home. First, let's acknowledge that Sinwar was a bad man with blood on his hands. He was a terrorist who killed people in Israel, who killed people throughout the region, who killed Americans. He was the mastermind behind October 7th that left 1,200 dead, about 250 in captivity, including Americans. Women brutally sexually assaulted and violated by Hamas, the terrorist group that Sinwar led. I am glad he is dead. It is my hope that that can bring some modicum of peace to the families, the victims uh, of those on October 7th. It's also my hope that this can perhaps create the opportunity for a pause in the fighting, that the hostages can come home and that we can have a ceasefire and immediately look to creating stability in the Middle East where Gaza can be rebuilt. And it would be my hope that we could have meaningful negotiations with nations all throughout the Middle East that would create the opportunity to construct a two-state solution. So I am hopeful that with this terrorist death, that we can hopefully create some Go. break in the action, a return of these hostages, and creating some stability in the region. Governor, let me ask you about a development we learned about overnight. Elon Musk says he will be giving away a million dollars every day to random voters who sign his super PACs petition. You are a former attorney general. Is this legal? I think there are real questions with how he is spending money uh, in this race, how the dark money is flowing, uh, not just into Pennsylvania, but apparently now into the pockets of Pennsylvanians. Um, that is deeply concerning. Look, Musk obviously has a right to be able to express his views. He's made it very, very clear that he supports Donald Trump. I, I don't, obviously we have a difference of opinion. Uh, I, I don't deny him that right. But when you start flowing this kind of money into politics, I think it raises serious questions that uh, folks may want to take a look at. So you think it might not be legal, yes or no? I think it's something that law enforcement could take a look at. I'm not okay. the attorney general anymore of Pennsylvania. I'm the governor, uh, but it does raise some serious questions. All right. Well, I have to end the interview by saying from one Pennsylvanian to another, go birds. We'll be watching the game today. Go Thanks. birds. <laughs> All right, Kristen. Thank Governor, you. Governor Shapiro, thank you so much for joining the program. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.